Today we're going to be disassembling and reassembling a Mossberg SA-20 shotgun. Uh, the SA stands for semi-auto and the 20 is for 20 gauge. Before we do that, we need to make sure that our safety is on. So right now the safety is off. Red means fire. So you associate red with burning flames, so fire. So we want that turned off. So that our safety is on and it's safe to uh, touch anything. First thing we're going to do is make sure that our gun is unloaded. The way we do that is by depressing the gate and we do a visual and physical check that there's no ammunition in the uh, magazine and we see the little red uh, plug on the end of the spring there that tells us there's no ammunition in there. So we release the gate, flip the gun, uh, what we're going to do is use the operator handle and we're going to pull it all the way back. And we're going to lock the chamber open. We're going to do a visual and look in the gun and a physical check. Put our finger in there. There's no ammunition in the gun. So the gun is empty and it is now safe to disassemble <coughs> our shotgun. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is keep the um, receiver open and we're going to remove the cap that's on the magazine so the way we do that is we just rotate this open you hear a ratcheting sound and that sound is coming from these little indentations on the inside of the cap and it goes past a spring on the forearm and I'll show you that. We'll just slide the forearm off, just like that. And right on the end there, there's this little spring-loaded pin that keeps the uh, magazine place locked, locked in place there. Um, so that's what you're hearing as it's, it's going past that. So we're gonna go ahead and set the forearm aside. <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is release the barrel forward out of our shotgun. And how we do that is by holding on to our operator level. And we're going to hold on to that nice and tight. And I usually put my, my forearm down on the, on the back of my gun so I have that staying still because our spring is under pressure. We don't want this to fly forward and hit our gas tube uh, ring up here because um, we don't want to destroy that. Um, that's an important part of the gun. So we hold on to our operator lever and we hit the button and we gently release this forward and we let that inch forward. You will get to a point where it gets to a point where it's kind of stiff right about uh, the, the release button. Uh, if your gun is new, it'll probably stop right there and you'll have to gently push it forward. Uh, mine is a little more uh, worked over so I can just gently let that release and my operator lever is going to come all the way up to the front of the receiver window and it just went ahead and gently advanced my uh, barrel forward so I can grab a hold of the receiver and the barrel and pull that forward and out all right so that's the uh, inside of the barrel <clears throat> Uh, this does have a gas shock tube to it. Uh, you'll be able to pull this out and clean it off. Uh, you want to make sure that it's clean of debris so that this little ring right here has um, give and it can expand and contract with the gas. Um, what this does is it captures some of the blowback from the fired rounds. <clears throat> so within the first two to three rounds, it'll capture that energy and what it does is makes it so there's less recoil that's coming back into your shoulder. So we're going to go ahead and set the uh, barrel aside and the gas tube. Uh, the next thing we need to be able to do is um, release the bolt carrier and the bolt and the tube that goes over the magazine. Uh, the way that I do that is I use a paper towel because usually my gun is oiled 
and it will slide forward and I don't want anything going anywhere and hurting anyone. And um, this gives me a better grip, especially if the gun is dirty and you have a bunch of uh, carbon from uh, spent <coughs> rounds. So what I do is I hold my gun still. I grab a hold of the magazine tube and the carrier bolt, everything, and I push the two together. And I want my operator handle to come past uh, my release button. And that allows me to be able to move my bolt back and forth like this. There is a half moon notch that's on the bolt and there's one on the carrier. You have to line those up on the inside and you will be able to pull your lever straight out and you'll see that it has like a key to it and a little half moon on it on the top and that's what fits into that notch so now that that's out we can release everything gently forward like this <clears throat> and off the end we don't want to let go so that spring doesn't just fly forward and hurt somebody okay so now that i have all of this assembly i can pull my bolt off of here and this is uh, responsible for the firing pin. Uh, so this back part is what the trigger mechanism hits when you uh, pull the trigger. And then that it points out that little uh, firing pin right there, which is what hits the, uh, the firing cap on your ammunition. So we, once it's off, we can take the, uh, the tube sleeve out. And the way that comes off is it just gently rocks forward like this. And you'll see that this little square piece just fits in so that everything is flush and flat. So we rock that off of there and we pull that off. That can be cleaned. And then we have our bolt carrier. And you'll be able to see the worn parts where uh, the metal slides together. So you'll know where to add a little more oil and keep it a... Uh, Nice and oiled up because you're scraping off metal right there, which is normal for wear and tear <coughs> of metal parts. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to have to do is pull the spring off. This is a full size spring. We go ahead and slide that off. It does not matter which side, it, which end it goes on. It doesn't matter. So get that all cleaned up and oiled so you don't get any metal fatigue on that. <coughs> And the next thing we have to do is take our trigger mechanism out and we have to release the pin, the retention pin out of there in order to do that. Um, your owner's manual tells you to use nothing larger than one eighth inch um, end on there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just use uh, part of my Allen set and I go ahead and I uh, give that a little punch and it, it started to indent and what it's going to do is just push all the way through and out. Don't lose that. That's what keeps your trigger mechanism inside your gun from floating out. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we need to release the uh, whole trigger mechanism down and out of the gun. And the way we do that is we have to hit the uh, release button right here and push that in a little bit and this is going to come forward and down and out just like that so it comes down and out this is your trigger mechanism once you get all that cleaned up with a, a little bit of bore cleaner with a toothbrush <coughs> you will be able to go back through with a q-tip and um, some some cleaning pads and get all that cleaned up do not take any of this apart unless you are a gus uh, licensed gunsmith um, it will negate the warranty on your gun and you don't want that um, what it does is it does control your safety mechanism that is right here on the back of your uh, trigger guard uh, so we don't want your gun to become unsafe to fire so that all stays as one unit you can kind of clean up and around it and get everything oiled and lightly oiled and then your gun is all the way apart <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> Now your gun is completely open and empty in the receiver and you can go ahead and clean all of the debris out of there and get it lightly oiled. Um, you can see the, the gate 
that goes for the uh, release button that works just like that that needs to work freely so that you can it's not only responsible for getting your uh, trigger mechanism back in but it's also responsible for uh, advancing your uh, your bolt forward <coughs> all right so the gun goes back together uh, backwards from how we took it apart so the last thing that was came out of the gun was the trigger mechanism so that's the first thing that goes back in and what we do is we when we had to hit the button to let it out it means we have to hit the button to put it back in so this goes in kind of butt first and slides back and kind of drops down in there give me a second let's try that again so that drops down in there now this is not seated yet because you'll see an open gap right here and you're going to push this backwards and you'll hear that click <clears throat> there is enough play right here where you can move this up and down and kind of forward and backward to line up the holes so that we can put the retention pin back in so i'm going to go ahead and visually check that and kind of set myself up for success here because we don't want to mash a bunch of parts there's no need to use a hammer on anything here <clears throat> so here's my re my trigger retention pin i'm gonna go ahead and slide that back into place it goes in real easy you should just be able to pop it in flush and flat on both sides so you should be able to put finger and thumb on both sides and it is flat <clears throat> now that our trigger mechanism is back in we need to put the spring back on again it does not matter which direction it goes it's universal we go ahead and slide that on the end of the uh, magazine tube all the way back up to the uh, butt of the receiver all right the next thing we need to assemble is the bolt carrier and bolt so what we do is we set our um, our bolt back up on top of our carrier the uh, the button that you can push in right here it goes toward the rear of the gun so we want the firing pin to go forward because that's where the bullet goes out of the gun. So we just go ahead and set that right on top. And I'll give you another view. It just sets right on top. And it does have some play and slide. So don't worry about that. That's natural. <clears throat> With my left hand, I'm going to hold that together because I'm going to tip this over to show you that we're putting the, uh, the tube sleeve back on. And that just tilts right back in there and you'll see that those two pieces are flush i'll do that again all right so our uh, carrier assembly is uh, assembled we're going to go ahead and hold this all together and slide it on the end of the magazine tube and uh, we have to put our spring under tension uh, to get all this back in place. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold of the end of this uh, magazine tube and uh, sleeve and I'm going to gently push this back in and there is plenty of wiggle room here. So if gravity takes hold and kind of flops over you kind of have to set it back up so that it can slide back in there. Okay. <clears throat> go ahead and slide all that back in and I want the notch to be past my uh, my release button so I get those two half moon notches lined up right there I take my operator handle lever and I just gently drop it back in there and that is set to go so we're going to gently release this forward so that it comes in contact with the uh, edge of the receiver there the front of it and then everything is not flying forward on us. <coughs> the next thing we need to do is uh, assemble our uh, gas tube back into the bottom of our barrel. And this little sleeve holds it. And that holds it in place. You don't need to smash it all the way forward. There is a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. So just as long as it's just flush up in there. It's, everything is fine <clears throat> now 
the way to put your barrel back in is the open side is facing the open side of your receiver and that's what allows your spent uh, shell to be ejected back out so we're going to go ahead and slide the barrel or the uh the gas tube onto the end of the magazine and we're just going to set the barrel the edge of the barrel inside the receiver <clears throat> now in order to seat my barrel my lever my operator level has to be halfway back in my receiver and uh, that'll make it so that everything will sit flush where it needs to be <clears throat> do not let go of your operator lever lever um, at that point uh, because at that point after everything is seated and flush we have to pull it all the way back to lock it into place <clears throat> so we don't want anything to fly forward because we don't want uh our carrier bolt to hit the uh, the gas sleeve <clears throat> so I put my uh, left arm back down on the on the butt of my shotgun I grab a hold of my lever and I pull it halfway back and as I, I'm pulling it back I can wiggle my barrel back into place and uh, you'll know when it's in place because the uh, the end of the rail your sight rail will be flush up against your receiver so that's touching now I can't let go because my spring is under tension I don't want anything to fly forward so what I'm gonna do is uh, grab a hold and pull it all the way back and lock my receiver open <clears throat> do not hit your release button because your spring is under full tension now and everything will fly forward and you'll damage your gas tube and you don't want to do that <clears throat> the, the second to last thing we're going to do is our um, forearm sleeve has to go back on so we uh, gently pick up the, the end of it here and we're going to bring this forward and you'll see a little uh, tongue and groove type of area and you want that to sit flush it should slide on very easy no problems you don't need a hammer the last thing we're going to do is put our uh, magazine cap back on. We're going to screw that on. And you'll see it will get to a point where it's kind of open and has a little bit of resistance. And this is when you're going to hear the clicking as those little dots go over that spring-loaded pin. And you want that to go all the way down until it's locked tight in place. <clears throat> your gun is now completely reassembled and we now have the ability to uh, release the gate so we're going to go ahead and press that make sure all your fingers are clear and it's going to shoot forward now this shotgun does have the ability to hold six rounds <clears throat> and the way that is done is by depressing the gate you load five rounds into the magazine tube if you have your uh, uh, magazine tube uh, holder uh, tube out so that you can hold all, all the way up. Um, once you have five in there, you can pull your gate back open. When, when you hit your button, what that's going to do is it's going to load one into the chamber. So if I had this completely loaded and I had five in there, then I would release my button. That puts one live round into the chamber. That means I can tip this back over, depress the gate, and add one more shotgun shell. And that would mean that I have six rounds loaded live ammunition in my shotgun. <clears throat> this has been the disassembly and assembly of a Mossberg SA-20 shotgun.